White supremacy takes the year out of your life that supports them the most. The threat is if we empower ourselves, it would be at the lessening of them. <laughs> here's, my, here's my social security number. Fuck it, here it is. Peace to the family, peace to and yours, brother Red Pill reporting live and direct. Yes, this is a very, very special episode that we're going to be doing tonight. Um, I am sitting here with none other than the man himself. <laughs> Let the heavens roar. We are here in the ATL of all places mm -hmm. with Captain Tazariak from the ISUPK, man. Man, I appreciate Peace it, Red, God. man. That's an excellent On his shirt, it said Real Nigga University. Real so Nigga University, me, yeah. Uh -huh. Real Nigga University. Indeed. I wore it on purpose, because we real niggas. Real niggas, yeah, man. No, uh, I was debating these white boys just last week, right? And so they asked me, they say, name one thing that black people gave to humanity. And I right. said, that Bible. I said, that Bible y'all all believe in, y'all gonna serve a nigga God right, right. and a nigga king. Right. And they went crazy I saw with it. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they went crazy when they, when they said it. So it that's why I wear the shirt, because it's, it's eye-opening, because for those of us that believe in the Bible, they wouldn't think we would use the word nigga the way that we use it. But That's the word right. niggas in the Bible, Acts 13 and 1, it just means black. So when they call you a nigga right. that they used as a downturn, right. really you can be our upturn. Upgraded. You right. know what I mean? Right. They could right. be our upgrade. It's like, okay, they, well, they was calling them niggas in the Bible because right. they was black. So we got to be them same people. So even That's the word fact. nigga can be a teaching point, you know, biblically. So. I mean, we're magical people. Mm -hmm. And they say that words create worlds. Mm -hmm. So we're not subjected to a word. Right. There's no word that somebody could throw at me and knock me off my square right. or give me a bad day. Right. I'm never going to let a word do that to me. So the alchemists that we are, we took nigga. Tupac said, never ignorant, getting goals accomplished. Okay, you okay. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And we was like, hmm, that makes sense. Right, So right. it's like, yeah, we, we don't, when I use nigga, it's not as an epithet. I don't say it with the hard ER. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I say that for my niggas. Right, right, right. You know right, what I mean? Right. So I definitely, you know, I feel you on that. Let's get right into this no thing, sir, man. What's up, what's up? Um, it's been a minute since mm -hmm. me and you even sat down with each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, one of the things that... Um, I could definitely say with all confidence is over the past few years, mm -hmm. the uh, the star mm -hmm. of Captain Tazariak has risen very brightly, you know, amongst okay. many others and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of you okay. for, you know, holding it down, holding down the square, staying consistent because consistency is key. Uh, I mean, I mean, you know, I belong to a movement where a lot of people started out real, real confident on the racetrack. But as Nipsey and them say, it's a marathon. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. It's not a race. So we mm -hmm. saw a lot of people have weak legs. And they they, they did a few laps. But, right, you know, right. <laughs> shout out to my niggas on them cereal boxes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what has kept Captain Tazaria consistent? What has kept you, you know, with strong legs? What has kept you going and mm -hmm. going and going and continue to go? in the midst of all of the madness, the changes, and all of these other things that have been going on? One thing I'll say is that what I have that um, I can't speak for what everybody else have is my belief in the Bible, my yes. belief in the Most High, and the leadership that I have with Commander Jenny Hanna, the generals right. that have pretty much guided me. Like, yes. I was like all the other brothers getting into that race trying to run that marathon, but what, with every step that I would take, I would always ask my generals, and get counsel. Okay. Like the scriptures say, in a multitude of counselors, there the city is safe. Right. So me getting that counsel, I would say. So I, in the beginning, I used to want to go everywhere. Like when I when I got into <laughs> listen when the Sinetters and all them came in front of the camps and they won a battle, I wanted to go to every single battle. But what right. they would tell me is that now nah, don't go to this battle. Go to this one. Don't go to this one. Go, don't go to this event. This event not going to be good. And mm -hmm. I didn't always understand it in the beginning because my mind is like, if I'm supposed to be battling these niggas, I don't want to sit down. That's but right. I would always listen because they outrank me, they wiser than me, and it ended up being the right thing because now I know how to discern where to go right. and where not to go. So that would be the first thing. The second thing is I, I love mm -hmm. 
like black people to the point to where I don't know if y'all could ever get rid of me. Right, right. Like right. I'm going <laughs> everywhere, wherever, wherever niggas wherever is at. at I'm wherever, wherever, when I'm saying black, like that's my Dominican, my all of my brothers right. of the twelve tribe. You know, we had the blacks and Spanish. So wherever they at. That's where I'm gonna go. You're not gonna get rid of me. Right. And I can run. I can what run. If, what yeah. if we go to an Afrobeat show? You coming with us? Who's Afro? Oh, that's some Africans in yeah. Miami. Oh, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> them Afrobeat. Listen, them. Listen, they culture. Yeah. Listen, they culture vultures <laughs> too, man. I, you know them hand We're gonna mic. get into it. Yeah, we're we gonna get into it. it. You know what I mean? Because I think they take the essence of. The, the West Indian Caribbean music, you know, that we created, like a part, like, that was a part of hip hop. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like Cool Hurt, West all Indian, day. you know what yeah, I'm saying? Dance hall, that was dance day. hall. The the Puerto Ricans with the dance, right, like right, all of those yeah. was the elements Reggae of culture. Thong, exactly. You know, all, right. all of that was the elements of culture that we built. And then these other nations, yes. we gave away. Like when you think about it, we give away all of you. Make, you made a point earlier, you were saying that we're magical. Mm -hmm. But with that magic, mm -hmm. we don't know how to defend ourselves from somebody taking our magic. Oh, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so we give that that uh, part away. So, nah, I ain't rocking with them. But when it comes to just black people, wherever they at, and I don't even care the environment. Right. Like, I get a lot of flack. I get I got flack. It's, it's weird because I got flack for dealing with the conscious community. Right. And I used to always say, well, ain't they black? Like, it's almost like when black people get righteous and shit. Right. They be forgetting that they was once them grimy niggas that they now hating on. Feel me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I love them because them grimy niggas usually be the best ones. You feel? Uh, you know let's what I mean? Get into because that. how yeah. how did they get grimy? Right. Look, you know, to be a let's let's say all I'm gonna say is on the left hand side. Not that to I be agree on the left with hand it, right? path, right? But but be on the left hand path to be the greatest drug dealer. Yeah. You're not sitting in the house. You active. To be the greatest thief, you're not sitting in the house. You active. You active. You right. actively Take out there. If you go to the gym chances. and you want to get big, right. you're not sitting there just posing and taking and pictures. Watching. You're getting right. under the weights and you pushing the weights. That pressure. So my mind state says, if I could take him, flip him, right. and get him on the right-hand side, if he's a go-getter for that, imagine how much he'll be a go-getter for the opposite. That's right. Whereas leadership looks at them... As if they're the problem. Like they're expendable. Yeah, they're you know what I'm saying? Right. Where the leadership is the problem. Because right. the reason why these cats is dealing drugs and broken homes is because the leadership that predated them failed them. Right. You know what I mean? They failed them to the point to where they like, this is the way I got to survive. Right. So that's how I look at it. Nah, I'm glad you bring that up. Um, mm -hmm. I want to touch on something and then get back to that. Okay. Right? I wanted to touch on counsel. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Which was very important. And you brought up the fact that, you know, you have counseling mm -hmm. or you have elders to counsel you. Right. And I was taught earlier in my years that youth was for war and elders were for counsel. Right. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So from my perspective, my from my vantage point, when I see movements falter, when I see those same people that you were talking about that are unruly, these quote unquote, I call them knuckle draggers. I right. call them 85ers and all of this stuff. Right. But you know, I'm like, these is niggas without counsel. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Um, they haven't received the proper counseling from a proper body of elders that not only did they respect, but these elders gotta respect themselves. Right. Because one thing that I could say about the general, uh, you know, through all out, through all of the years of being in Harlem and this whole YouTube wave and everything, you know, and and you know, we got researchers on our side. Right. Everybody's digging right. for dirt. Everybody, Everybody digging, looking for flaws. Looking for something. And it was like, you know, um, they weren't able to find these things from this group of elders who they would love to find it on, so mm -hmm. they could discredit the whole organization. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when it comes, so so the word. Elders for counsel, not olders. Right, I know what you mean. Because there's some olders sitting around right now outside, that are you know, not wasting elders. away right. that are not elders. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely respect that. I want to know from you, at what level of from one to ten would you put the importance of having elders as counsel, even mm -hmm. if you don't belong to an organization? If, like you said, if you're mm -hmm. active, if you're outside, if you're in the shit, if you're in the mix. How important is it to have a group of elders, whether it's women or men, that can help guide you like a spirit guide, similar to what you say, they tell you where to go, where mm -hmm. not to go, where to pop up at, where not to pop up at. And I know that sometimes they'll burn you because you be like, 
damn, I had these new uh, ISUPK Air Force Ones. I just like, <laughs> you know, or I got invited. We was all going to, you know what right. I mean? So how important would you say that is to keeping you in alignment and to keeping you on on? Uh, I think purpose? it's a 10. I'd be a full out gremlin without counsel. Mm. I wouldn't even know like where I would be. And when I say at a 10, and from a counseling perspective, like counsel is so important to us that we don't just counsel people that are just like in our organization. Right. Like if you're not in our organization, we counsel. I counsel a lot of people that are not in ISUBK and sometimes don't even end up in ISUBK. They go join some other stuff, mm -hmm. but they still get the counsel. That's how important it is. And that's why I quoted that scripture in counsel, the city is protected. Right. Think in our generation from where we come up from, you would always have the elders in your neighborhood. Right. That would OGs. be like your, the, right. what we call OGs. The village. The village that would raise the youth. Yes. Because now when you get older, at some point, you ain't moving fast like that no more. But right. you see the youth coming up, they're replacing you. Right. So just like regeneration, like when a, a potato dies or when an onion dies, you see the baby onion growing within, within that it. onion. Right. You understand? So now as the youth is coming up, I'm excuse me, as the elders are getting older, you see the youth coming up. They the ones growing while we're going away. away. Right. So if we're not giving them the proper counsel, how are they going to know what to do? That's what I'm saying. You all that saying? experience going. Right, right. It's and all that wasted experience. Yeah, the, it, especially if the experience ain't guided in the right direction. Right. When you made a point to say just because you're old don't make you an elder. Right. Everybody out here in our neighborhoods, because we have given up and be more on the left side, we don't give a lot of good advice. But if we had counsel, my counsel comes from the generals, which comes from the most high. And if we had counsel and a moral authority that goes with it. So when you go to a counselor, like the scriptures say, out of a thousand people have but one counselor. So mm. I can't go to you, 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 and you. Right. I got to find that one, one brother. Right. And that one brother got to be on the right accord. And that's who I get the counsel from. And if you get a counselor that tells you everything you want to hear, that's how you know that's not your counselor. Mm. Your counselor should be able to come and you, you going to come to him with this great idea. You want to do this. You want to do that. And he might say, no, nah, I don't think that's a good idea. Right. If he has the heart to tell you that to your face, then that's the counselor that you should have. How do you keep your counselor focused and not faltering? What I mean by that is, imagine if I had found that one counselor mm -hmm. who I stand on, whatever this man says, and I'm locked in with him. Mm -hmm. But one day I'm riding down the street and I see my counselor doing some fuck shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And it and, and throws me. I almost, you know what I mean? It, it yeah, that's the worst thing you can see. World. You know what that's going to do? It shatters me. You ain't going to get no counsel from him no more. And that's what the beauty of the Bible, like in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, say servants be obedient to your masters. Yes. Right? Now, most people use that for slavery. But right. with the part that they miss is that the masters have to be obedient to the servants too. Right. So I got my generals, I have to serve them. Right. They also have to serve me. Right. So the same way they're giving me instructions and stuff that I have to do, they have to do the same thing. That's how this works because the person giving you counsel on whatever it is, you can't see them doing no crazy ass shit. Right. Because how are you going to, like a cat that's getting high, That let's say you're trying not to get high. Yeah. And you go into this cat and he counseling you on it. And then you see him getting high. How are you going to counsel you? <laughs> right, right, right. If you got a problem sleeping with whores or something like that, right. and your brother telling you this is what you don't do, and you see him coming out of the strip club, he can't right. tell you that. Right. So be like, don't be like yeah. me. <laughs> I'm doing this tonight, but don't be like me. Yeah, don't, don't be like you. This shit so hurts. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a give and take right. with the counseling. So they have to, they know that they're upheld to the same standard that they're requiring of me. Yes. And that's what we got to put. We got to, in our neighborhoods, we got to reinvent the standard that we're going to live by, what we're going to allow, what we're not going to allow. Fact. When we can get to that point, then that council is going to save the city. So those standards that you speak of, mm -hmm. if I was not in one of these closed door meetings, mm -hmm. if I was not a part of the organization, mm -hmm. You know, I don't see those standards on the wall. I don't see those standards on your chest. Right. I don't see those standards. I would have, how could those standards find me? How would I be introduced 
to these much needed standards mm -hmm. because what you just mentioned is something that's an ingredient that I feel that our nation, our people, my generation, mm -hmm. the younger generations, like that's what they're yearning for. Brothers that don't have father figures, uncles and positive role models and the sisters as well. How do we even get these quote unquote tenets or these commandments or these rules? One thing I love about ISGBK, man, Jenna Yohanna had us all in his cage. Like yeah. he had us in his cage and shit, like a bunch of lions. He just got in the cage. Right. And then he just, just lift that bitch up and said, go. Right. And then what we had to do at that point, we had to go everywhere. Right. So we had to go to the Atlanta, to the Maryland, to the Carolinas, to California. We have to go on social media. We got to be everywhere, like you said, the people that don't have it right. to spread that knowledge right like you like like christ said you can't put your light under a candle it's gonna go out mm. you gotta let your light shine. shine right so i'm everywhere right when i'm at knowledge i'm at and here and here's the the bugged out part about it right right when i go into different spaces mm -hmm. i'd be surprised like i met um king los one time yeah i met king los at a battle rap at a battle rap event, event. right i didn't even know he knew me that's right. I'm on a stage at the battle rap because I met I met B Dot, and so I'm on a stage. B Dot well, was and, a polite battle, right? No, nah, this wasn't polite. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all could give me the credit for killing that nigga. I get all the credit for killing that nigga for life, but we can talk about that in a second. Yeah, but he must have died <laughs> twice if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling niggas about him. And that shit he was doing, that he was just like his father, right? Before Across the Line happened, when right, we was right, at right. the Brooklyn Theater, and I was Ooh, talking about and Flatbush, remember? And you Flatbush, cook. remember? You cook. Remember? You cook. Yeah, you cooked I was that talking one. about that shit back That's then. That's a classic. Listen, you cooked his wives too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Remember I said he you, twirling around and shit like that, and that everybody one. was like, "Cap, you going too far? He's not like that. He ain't doing that." And now he's in jail for that. Which lets you know he was we, like he was almost like Kendrick back there. He was yeah, the early yeah, the early drink yeah, accusations yeah, and shit. Yeah. Not, my, yeah, not the so boy. Yeah. <laughs> not the boy. <laughs> yeah, the boy. Yeah, the boy. Oh, and now we that find out. That's a classic. That's a that's a very that shit. No, you know what? Yeah, Sod. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. Niggas bury that. Yes, they buried a lot. Oh, like wow. Sod buried his version across the line because he told me his angle was worse right. than the angle that we had. That's a fact. So when it came to Polite, Polite got shut down. But that that battle in Polite was so good. So when I'm on the stage with B Dot, Low stands next to me. He's like, "Tazaria, what you doing up here?" And I'm looking at Los like <laughs> I'm supposed to look at Los right, like, like, man, this you, is Los right, the battle right, 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 right. now. I'm supposed, <laughs> hey, what's up, Los? But he doing that back to me, and the, so that lets you know <laughs> two things. One. The work that we're doing is working, yeah. and two, you never know who's watching you. Who's watching? Remember, you made an excellent point that said everybody got researchers, so yeah. everybody is trying to find some dirt on ISUBK, Commander Jenny House, especially me. Right. Like when I'm saying, especially me, if they can put dirt on you, then they don't have to listen to you, or your credibility goes down. Right. The minute that they can get dirt on you, and they can be any kind of dirt. Like when that woman did that interview, man, right. she, they had me as a damn child molester, alcoholic, right. woman beater, all of that shit. I'm with the same women right. that I was with back then. Right. Same daughters, same kids, same all of that. And so even in that, you survived that. And so if you can uphold yourself to that standard, you just keep pushing. So we go everywhere because that's the only way they're going to feel it. There wasn't no Atlanta in 2013. Yeah. There wasn't no school in Atlanta. Right. It took somebody coming down to Atlanta. Like Officer Yermayel is not here right now. He started off in North Carolina. I raised that brother. Right. Over the phone. Right. At that time, I don't think the internet was as popping. It wasn't popping like So that. we was doing like stuff over the phone. Right. I met him, gave him his Hebrew name. He comes to Atlanta. Now Atlanta's built. Right. You got other brothers in Texas. So it comes from constantly pushing. You ain't, nobody's going to know anything unless you market it. Mm. If you don't market it and, and push it, it right. and clout, like I was talking, to, I was saying this on my radio show the other day. Everybody make it seem like clout is bad. Clout is not bad. It's only bad how you go about, about it. it. That's right. Everybody wants clout. There's That's nobody right. that makes a post online that does not want clout. 
it could be 10 likes. If you only get, if you a nobody, you got 10 likes, you might you feel lit. like you made it. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, to get to the 100, yeah, you got to get to the 100 You got to get to the 10 first. It's only when, you know, you got to twerk for it or right. shake your ass for it or do be something. Be a court jester. Yeah, like be a, exactly. Exactly. So when you're doing things like that for clout, then it's bad. But to get on an interview, to do this, to do that, that's what you're supposed to do. If I, I don't battle it, right. polite, if mm -hmm. I don't battle the polites and the sonettas and go in these different places, nobody, you, we wouldn't know each other. Right, You right. know what I'm saying? So all that stuff is necessary. Interesting, interesting. So mm -hmm. going veggie back in, because mm -hmm. so, we don't do piggyback. Right. Veggie back into the mm -hmm. earlier statement mm -hmm. that, you was, that you made about basically catching the brothers and sisters when they are quote unquote in their dark stages or whatnot, mm -hmm. or when when they're when they're knuckle dragging, um, I've been to you know I've been behind the wall before, mm -hmm. and I know that it takes you know the most high because I say that that's our vacation. You know what I mean? People call it college and whatnot, and when they go behind the wall, it's like yo, I was in school and. You know, but I tell people sometimes you get your life saved when you get sat down because mm -hmm. you was out here moving too fast. You know what I mean? You you was almost going to get your shit knocked back mm -hmm. and you got your little skid bid or you got sat down. And um, when you're behind the walls, you realize that some of the people who were playing ignorant in the world or, you know, just do, you know, keeping up with the Jones and playing a character, you, you begin to see that some of our brightest and, and, and our, some of our smartest, some of our most quote unquote talented are trapped mm -hmm. behind these walls and whatnot. So I commend organizations like yours and other organizations that capture people before they even got to go through that. Right. You feel me? And turn them around so you don't got to go through the experience of being trapped, being a slave and whatnot yeah, in talk. this modern day system and then coming home saying, uh, hey mom, I'm 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 up right now. Or, right, right. Hey baby moms, I'm <laughs> I got a new name and you know what I'm saying. I don't eat bacon. You know they like nigga. You know right. what I'm saying. But I know that they respect it more when you don't do it under stress and duress. Right. When you do it willingly and whatnot. So I just brought that up to just say that you know the work is very important to capture right. our people that while they're in that stage before they get caught up in the mm -hmm. system. So my question to you is, what is y'all approach? Like, let's say that you come amongst a group of, you know, wayward brothers and sisters who are out there and you could just look at them and tell where they're headed and whatnot, either mm -hmm. that grave or that cell. What is the intervention? How do y'all basically intercept? And based off y'all metrics, what is your success rate? Like if there's 10 of them and you get one, is that successful? Is that a touchdown? Like what, it, you know, what, what, what's your metrics? So sometimes, um, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll speak like, man, I may not get none of them. Yeah. Like, like going into it, I don't set an expectation because um, there becomes a letdown with that. Right. So like right, if right. I, if, let's say if it's them 10, I'm saying, man, I should be able to get at least four of them. Right, right. Let's say if I don't get none of them. That's that could be, be a, depressive. Right. It could you know be. what I mean? I walk away. How am I going to go to the next 10, <laughs> to, the, to the next five? Right, right. Or whatever. Like the scriptures say, my sheep hear my voice. So maybe them brothers just didn't hear it at that time. Mm -hmm. But when I usually talk to people, because the Bible has been shoved down our throat um, from a Christian perspective, if I just come in there and say, you know what, Peter said this, and Paul said that, and right. shit like that. Them niggas gonna be like, man, that's a white man. That's, you know, Peter, this, and they ain't ready to get the whole history of, no, these is black, you know, the Israelites is black and all of that stuff. So I'll go into environments and without using the Bible verse, I'll talk just like the Bible. Mm. Like when we think about Christ, who was a nigga and right. was a thoroughbred. Right, right. He didn't, you never really see him quote, excuse me, he'll paraphrase the scripture, but he's not reading scriptures. He'll read and assess what's happening. Right. And then he'll just talk like that. Mm -hmm. That's how I do Speak it. the language of the it, people. Exactly. So if I'm going, so I use, um, um, I used to go on, well, I st I'm still on this app called Clubhouse. And I was in this room called the Hunter Side run by uh, WAC 100, crazy nigga, right? Right. And I would go in his rooms. Right. And when you go in his rooms, you getting every fucking thing. You getting some hoe shit, some gang shit, mm -hmm. some business street shit, shit. Right. some street shit. You getting everything. But you now, in their defense, what you were saying, like, before they get to the darkness, 
it's a lot of light in that darkness. Franks. Like a lot of them cats that be on that hunter side, it's mm. a lot of light. Them niggas is smart. That's right. It's just circumstances. And that's what I, like, when I, when I really think about brothers and sisters, I always know that if they circumstances was different. That's right. They wouldn't be the way that they are. A lot of them niggas is smart. A lot of them sisters is smart and educated, but maybe somebody uh, touched them wrong. Right. Or did something to them, or they didn't grow up without their mother or father, so their survival tactics just messed up their moral compass. So when I go into an environment like that, I'll just speak to them in a language that they can understand. Right. So I don't have to give them the Bible, but I'm giving them the Bible. And then as I start talking to them, they be like, nah, we want to hear from Cat. What you say, brother? What you say on that? And so now once I get to that part, right. then I could go in and then teach. And they say, well, where do you get this from? Now I could say, well, I'm an Israelite. I teach this and I teach that. But I don't right. shove the Bible down their throat right away because everybody ain't ready for that. So it's the proverbial... When the student is ready, then the teacher shall appear. So no, I'm dead <laughs> yeah, ass. So yeah, when no, they when talk. they call on you, right. when they when they when they ask for it, mm -hmm. that's when you receive. Yeah. Rather than coming up in that bitch, I got free Bibles mm -hmm. passing out and people. Real are talk. Like, Yo, can you can you When I first got into that when I first got into that room and I'm using that room because this is a real time environment of what right. you're asking. Case study. Right. When I first got into that room, they didn't want to hear nothing about no Bible. That's right. In two weeks. I would do hour-long sessions teaching on the Bible. And what you also find out, them cats in darkness, Yeah. oh, they want to know about God. They right. want to know about why their life is like this. Why is, it, why is this happening? And they want a real answer. They don't want the Christian answer where God going to make it right in the morning, just pray on it and stuff like that. They want a real live, this happened to you because your mom left you, you was a survivalist. Right. This happened to you because the environment that you grew up in made you believe that selling drugs was okay, being in gangs was okay, robbing and stealing was okay, but that's not the way it was. Now, once I do that, I'm teaching the Bible. Right. Like, I mean, when I say certified teaching the Bible, I mean teaching the Bible to where it got to a point to where whenever they wanted to know anything, they said, hey, man, get Cap up in here. Right. Get Cap Tazariak in here. We need him to talk You're and break this down. expert now, right. Exactly. You're, you're and that so topic. that's what we would do in every environment, the conscious community, the Christians, everywhere we go to right. where our reputation is now, we want to hear the Israelites perspective, perspective on this. To where everybody in every environment, I started seeing it in uh, battle rap. Like, I didn't know battle rap was, like, I love battle rap. Like, I debate like a battle rapper. Like, right. straight up, I would listen to, like, Surf is my favorite of all time. He the Free greatest away. there. Free Surf away. is the, Surf is like the creme de la creme for right. me. Right. Like, I don't think, not, like, he just knows how to make everything work in battle rap. Yeah, he checks, he te he checks it all. I ain't gonna, so, I ain't gonna lie. He, yeah, he so I would three. listen to him. Yeah, so I would listen to him, Nitty, all these different battle rappers before I would go battle a Polite or a Shaka or go on Jesse Lee Peterson right. or go in the clubhouse and so I could get into that. So they helping me get into my mode. Right. You know what I mean? To battle. Right. You, and even that's biblical. Like when you go into the Bible, and read when Elijah battled the 450 prophets of Baal, he's clowning them. He's like, where your God at? Maybe that nigga's sleeping. Maybe right. he's taking a nap. Maybe we can't find that. That's how he's talking in the Bible. Right, right. So battle rappers is encompassing right. the spirit of the prophets in the Bible. And so when you do that, you get into all these different modes so I could go to them. And now it becomes a little easier because the Israelites are being requested. Right. Like we being now requested because they getting tired of the church. That's the right. church is pussies, and they want to know. And it's interesting because we all spiritual. Mm -hmm. I'm using that. I don't, I don't mean. I didn't mean to do the air quotes. But we all spiritual. Black people by default right. are just naturally spiritual, spiritual. people, and right. they're gonna always want an answer that satisfies that inner desire. That's I don't right. care what you want to call it. So now, when they, they hear about these Israelites, oh, them Israelites do it like this. Like the brothers were just saying when they see me do the cross the line with polite. They coming into the school because they think, oh, y'all could do that. And now they coming into the school because they ain't got to lose their masculinity. Right. They could still be aggressive. Mm -hmm. They could still be a man. And that's another thing that they try to beat out of black men is, ma is being a man is now not the thing to do. Right. You know what I mean? To make you extra soft. Like if you stand on your 10, right. now you bad. Right, when right, really right. we should be aggressive. There's something called righteous aggression that's a good thing. Right. So I agree. I did a video 
in 2014, I believe. Mm -hmm. It was with Doggy Diamonds, mm -hmm. right? Back when it was called Forbes DVD. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And we were going in on a debate culture, mm -hmm. right? And I brought up a point that, you know, ruffled some feathers back then, but I said that if a war were to kick off, you know, the I first remember. people yeah, that I'm yeah, tapping in yeah, with was the Israelites, is the Israelites yeah, yeah. because of their demeanor, mm -hmm. because of what they represent in the fold of things. I was looking at it from a worldview, like, right. it, like a Voltron perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, you don't throw them away. And this was before our community kind of softened up. You right. know what I mean? This right. was this was this was before that. This happened. when it was a little bit more thorough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. So you know, I've always seen the. Um, I've always seen not just that aspect of it, but I've, I've always recognized what that is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, like you said, we got to we got to focus on men being men. Like we can't use the excuse. Nah, they be too riled up. Nigga. <laughs> Nigga. Y all, y all, but we out here standing next to the drug dealers. Right. And they rolling dice. And they selling uh, pornography right there. And I seen a nigga pockets get dug. And you talking about that's your man from Brooklyn. He a shooter. Mm -hmm. But you selling all of this consciousness. But they too loud though, right? Right. They too loud. Nah, we not going to do that. So, you know, I was always that kind of advocate. Cause, but I want to pivot because you brought up battle rap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we are in the, you know, we are in the aftermath of what they called one of the greatest battles <laughs> in rap. Right, right, right. And, <laughs> and to be honest with you, 